you gotta kick it off with a killer to grab attention. Then you gotta take it up a notch. The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Who are you? I'm Shiva, the god of death. Cells. Cells. Interlinked. Interlinked. It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. Welcome to The Baser, a film podcast. I'm Jared Rusk, and I'm joined by my co-host, Will. Bongiorno. <laughs> On this show, we explore both new and familiar movies as we attempt to analyze and interpret them, all in an effort to debase the films and ourselves. Hey, guys. Hey, Will. Hey, Jared. We got kind of a heady one today. Oh, we got, we got a great, great episode for you today. So this has been long in the works. Uh, I think we mentioned this movie almost almost every episode close to it yeah it, at least half of them yeah and it's it's about time we we just get it get it over with <laughs> yes because uh there is a strike or at least there was a strike possibly that's true we we've heard tale that it may be ending so by the time you hear, hear this it's uh hopefully it's long over at least for the writers guild that's right not i haven't actors. heard anything about the screen a sag after uh getting their demands met yet yes uh but it might be half over by the time you hear this uh we'll, we'll drop in and edit in the podcast you know as the news comes out mm -hmm. but uh, it is october as you're hearing this and you know we're in the middle of our horror movie month and today we're doing a french film from 2008 called martyrs it's I love this movie. Will has the biggest fucking I, on his I'm, face. <laughs> I'm so fucking excited to talk about this movie. Uh, we do need to do a little bit of content warning at Absolutely. the beginning. Absolutely. So, uh, huge, huge content warning. And I do can't not say stress this. It. Yeah, I can't yeah, stress I, it enough. I can't say this lightly because um, we don't often give content warnings on our show. We haven't really needed to. And, right, because this is definitely the most intense or extreme movie that we've ever done and may even ever do, honestly. Yeah, probably. So this film contains graphic depictions of kidnapping, imprisonment, violence, child abuse, murder, torture, self-harm, and suicide. This is the most extreme film we may ever cover on this podcast. Now, as an addendum, there was an American remake in 2016 that is largely derided and considered inferior. Uh, we are not We're going not to talk about, about that, that movie. No. I don't recommend you watch that movie. In yeah. fact, I can barely recommend you watch this movie because... <laughs> As we've said, it's a lot. It's very intense. Um, it is not for, uh, you know, a sensitive person or the weak-willed. Um, yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot to take in. I watched it for the second time ever today. Third time for me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I, I watched it like two years ago for uh, 13 right. Days of Halloween thing. I was like, yeah. I'm going to put Martyrs on my list so that everybody in our group asks me, what's that? <laughs> and maybe watches it. I, and I do find that like, as I, cause when we first watched this like 10 years ago, yeah. I, I was like, that was crazy. And now that I'm like, you know, approaching middle age, I'm, I'm like, I'm a little more queasy yeah. about it. And I don't want to see these things depicted. You know, it's not, I, when I was young, mm -hmm. I liked to seek out the most extreme things. Like there was a time where like I went on, uh, oh, what was that website? Rotten. Rotten.com. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Thank you. And You're welcome. Uh, you know, we were both. <laughs> You know, like edge lords, yeah. Back in way back in the day, still kind of when we were in high school. I mean, honestly, it's hard to completely erase, yeah, shake because it it's like good. part of our like you know we were adolescents and it was a time when like 4chan was a big thing, Encyclopedia yep. Dramatica. And you could go anywhere and see beheading videos and right. Whatnot. The internet was we were in the middle of the Iraq War, so you just kept yeah. seeing those kinds of videos. Um, you know, the internet was like a place full of that stuff, yep. And uh, you know, with like the internet speeds becoming what they were. You could just download like the most graphic videos or pictures you could see. Mm -hmm. And we were desensitized to that stuff yeah. early on. And it became funny to like make jokes about that sort of thing or just like to show each other like the most graphic, like tub girl, you know, yeah. to trick each other and looking at like the grossest things. Goat sea also comes to mind. Cake farts. <laughs> <laughs> I got to inject some sort of humor because uh, this is going to be a downer. Yeah, I know. Uh, pain Olympics, you know, yeah, you, you name it. Pain Olympics, exactly. What's the one with the jar? I don't know. Uh, even... That's that's the just jar guy. Just jar guy. That's yeah. right. So don't Google any of these things, please. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I'm only saying this for people who are nodding along being like, yeah, I was also a fucking sicko in the early 2000s, you know? <laughs> yeah, we know all, all 10 of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but all that is to say, this movie there's a lot of quote unquote torture porn. Yeah. You know, 
And this film was inspired by Hostel. Was it? But I, yeah. No, okay, cool. I up. know you've got a lot of details. Yeah, the uh, director that... was was inspired by that movie by Eli Roth's Hostel. What a bummer! Right. Oh, well, I mean, he he took that movie, consumed it, and made something transcendent. I I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. I because I'm not a fan of the torture porn genre. Like I think yeah. it's overplayed. It's for a specific audience. Sure. I, I mean, do we not like Eli Roth. We've got like twelve Saw movies, so like I get it. I know. And he, honestly, those aren't even that bad compared to. What I'm thinking, like host, like Eli Roth, yeah. I think makes way worse films. Yeah, well, I mean, he's kind of a hack. Yeah, <laughs> I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I digress. Martyrs, there is something there. It does feel like it's it's a bit more transcendent than just what it's depicting. Yeah. We'll, we'll, well, I mean, we'll, we'll circle back to yeah, this yeah, by the end. Um, but but there's a reason why this movie kind of has a a hallowed place between us. Yeah. So Martyrs is free to watch on Tubi, Pluto, Vudu, and the Plex. Plex, like yeah. regular Plex, not someone else's Plex channel. Like it's just on Plex with ads. You blew my mind when you told me that. I was like, there's yeah. no fucking way they've got this movie just hiding for yeah. anybody to watch. The remake is also on there, but again, don't watch it. Don't watch it. it. <laughs> don't watch it. I actually, I sat down and read this, a recap of the remake today, and I understand why people are Oh, did you really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I cannot they wait change to talk a lot about of things. that too. It's stupid. You're kidding me. Mm-hmm. That's well, I mean, you're not kidding me, obviously. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But and in fact, the director is furious about it. Not really? just because they changed the script so much. Yeah. But also because he didn't like apparently he didn't make a dime off of it because of the way that his contract was written with the <laughs> studio. And so he's like, I'm more mad I didn't get paid for it than I am that it, they fucking fucked up. Yeah, they, they made they a fucked up version art. of my movie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wild. Um, and that's John Carpenter has similarly been like, you know, what, how do you feel about all the remakes of your movies? And he's like, you know, something beautiful happens every time they come to me and ask, you know, Hey, we're going to do a remake of one of your movies. I just put my hand out and money appears in it. And then I'm happy. <laughs> and I go back home and I play video games. <laughs> we stand John Carpenter. Dude, man. what a badass. <laughs> I know. Oh, I God, he's, his music. Great. Yes. He's great. Okay. We got back to murders. Yeah. No uh, more happy. No more laughing. <laughs> we're done. This is not a happy episode. <laughs> So the film stars, and I all apologies. To I am going to have a problem saying their names too because I wrote down. We should Anna just say their characters' names because Anna and Lucy is much easier. So you know what's really crazy is Anna's last name is the same thing as her, her actress's last name. So this is like Mor- oh. Morjana Aloui. So as, as she plays Anna Aloui, I will take that. I will take that. And Mylene Jampa Jampanoy is Lucy. Lucy, sure. I think her last name is like Juniper or something like that. I, I Jun- don't think Jun-Pair. I could. I could. Uh, do a better job so i'm gonna take it <laughs> yeah and then i didn't write down anybody else because like i in a same in a way they're all very minor they're tertiary characters yeah. yeah those are those are our leads for sure um the brief synopsis is a young woman's quest for revenge against the people she believes kidnapped and tormented her as a child leads her and a friend who is also a victim of child abuse on a terrifying journey into a living hell of depravity yeah that's that nails it for the most part yeah it, uh, although Anna Anna was a, a victim of so that's the official synopsis, yeah, for this film, and it is only like vaguely hinted at by when she makes a phone call to her mother. You know the scene. I'm yeah, talking I know. About? I know exactly. What right before about. something happens, she yeah. makes a phone call to her mom. Yeah, and uh, her mom is like very is berating her for not talking to her for years, and she's like, "Don't you think not a day goes by that I don't regret what I did and and stuff?" And right, it's like, but you have. I that's you're just saying I guess to assume from this uh this synopsis that something happened to her when she was a kid that's kind of wild right and I think that's why she's in the I don't know if it's a sanitarium I initially I thought it was an orphanage in the beginning with yeah, Lucy I think it's like a it's a a place for like troubled, troubled kids right but like I thought for man we're already getting into it uh I, yeah we we should uh <laughs> well no, no no i mean this this does play into the the opening of the movie like the yeah. the the how you say kind of transitory period between what happens to lucy and the 15 years prior to that like how she meets Anna and whatnot right. but so i guess to to back up just a little bit the are we gonna like just you want to do the uh i got a little bit more left go for it sorry no no, no you're good you, you go for it and then we can do the whole thing so the film was written and directed by Pascal Laguerre. Thank you. <laughs> I had no idea how to say this. Yeah, that's a guess. Laguerre. Laguerre. I, I, I like Laguerre. 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 Yeah. The film was written and directed by Pascal Laguerre. Uh, Pascal also directed the film French horror films The Tall Man and Ghostland. Haven't seen either of those. 
Yeah, no one has. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The film's uh, Martyr's budget was $2.9 million, and it grossed $1.1 million no, at the box office. No, not a loss. You really, you thought this film was going to be a banger? Like, it was just going to, like, crush yeah, it? Yeah, you know, you always hope that word of mouth is going to gonna get it i mean you like you should it, go see the most fucked up movie on the biggest screen the loudest speakers possible <laughs> yeah dude if if i had known this movie existed when i was 18 you best believe my <laughs> ass would be in that seat this okay so the like first screening for this film in france mm-hmm. literally had like a guy passed out and a woman vomited fuck and, like, yeah they I, always I can... movie premieres love to say stuff like that like ever since like alfred hitchcock yeah to just be like you know for the show of it all like for the showmanship right right, right. like oh you will faint in terror but this actually happened no this like i'm pretty sure that wasn't a stunt for this movie no i highly believe it it, that reminds me of that uh cannibal movie that french cannibal Cannibal holocaust no not cannibal holocaust uh oh oh. the one uh, the two sisters one is in college oh raw raw yeah and famously had someone pass out in the theater yeah i remember like reading about that and you're like hey man let's let's watch raw and we did and it was like this movie fucking sucked it wasn't i found it underwhelming but it was was, underwhelming it had way too much hype i could absolutely you were colder on it than i was (laughs) yeah i could absolutely believe that someone did fucking vomit or pass out watching this film yeah and it and it's well deserved yeah I thought you meant Cannibal Holocaust. No, which, but that I don't even like that. Famously, the uh, crew was arrested. The director was arrested yep, because they because believed he actually killed some of the cast. For yeah, the film. I don't like that movie just because they actually killed animals. It's it's fucked up for a lot of reasons. That movie's fucking it's it's bad. Rough. Yeah. So, critical response. Writing for the Montreal Gazette, critic John Griffin stated that Martyrs is a film of almost unspeakable horror and sadism that is also a cleverly controlled exercise in hardcore terror with a real end in mind critic maitland mcdonald wrote that the film has more than you can top this shocks in mind okay i read that wrong i'm sorry it's like it's like i'm not a good not good at reviewing <laughs> critic maitland mcdonald wrote that the film has more than can you top this shocks in mind for all its brutality martyrs is conspicuously high-minded rooted in the centuries-old notion that spiritual transcendence lies just beyond the horizon of pain in contrast Film critic for the Times UK, Peter Whittle, wrote, The air of pretentiousness and the whiff of lesbian chic suggests that the bunch of nihilists who produce this garbage will claim Boo. something for it. All of it really demonstrates is that there is something seriously rotten in the state of France. Boo. I thought you would love what that review. What a fucking prude. <laughs> oh, it's pretentious. Oh, that just means he didn't fucking get it. I see where he's coming from. I can also see it, but also <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> Oh my god! It was funny because like I was rooting through reviews, yeah, and like a lot of the bad ones were just repulsed yeah. by how brutal it was. But that sure. one I felt like really put the nail on the head of someone who like he's like, yeah, I get it. It just sucks. It was yeah. kind of the impression I yeah. got from him. fuck that guy, <laughs> piece of shit. So a little backstory on this film, and this is like debaser lore now. Yeah, what is it? Uh, basically, this podcast would probably not exist without this film. Oh, 100%. This is what got me and you just like really start watching movies together. Yes. So, One Fateful Day, uh, was it 2013? I, so I or was, was it wor- older? Hold on. I was working at the uh, animal hospital. So, it was either 23 or 24. So, it was either 2013 okay. or 2014. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, right in line with what I was thinking, yeah. uh, I was trying to impress you. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I, we picked up, you know, that we were both like kind of movie guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to impress you and your wife Haley with an obscure horror movie because I knew that's what you were into. Yeah. Uh, which is a hard thing to do because you were already at that time, like you, you know, you were. I pretty, was exploring. Yeah. Yeah. This, I was already having my awakening. You know, I, I was. Uh, I say. I didn't live under the thumb of my mother, you know, <laughs> trying to protect my my poor innocent brain from these awful films. Yeah. And yeah, I kind of went off the fucking deep end and was like, I want to watch some real fucked up shit, you know? <laughs> so yeah. Um, so I had read enough online about this film and had it recommended to me multiple times mm-hmm. uh, that Martyrs was like one of the, like the most messed up horror movies you could watch. And like, it wasn't just you know fucked up for the sake of being fucked up like, yeah like your eli roth movies and and what have you like, right or your cannibal holocaust which i like perhaps infamously uh in high school uh 
downloaded to my PlayStation Portable and would bring around the gym <laughs> class to be like, look at this, hey, look at movie. this fucking movie. That's how much of a fucking loser I was in high school. That's actually kind of badass. <laughs> I was not that cool. I was weird. <laughs> um, like, do I regret it now? Absolutely. I would never sit down and watch that movie now. <laughs> yeah, that movie's fucking, not worth your money. It's bad. Yeah. Um, so I read not to look into the plot at all. So I decided like, I'm going to go into this blind, but like, I don't feel like all these recommendations I've read are going to steer me wrong. Like I feel right. I felt yeah. pretty like trusting with them. So I invited you and Haley over uh, with my then girlfriend, now wife. Yes. Uh, to watch the film. Uh, I was living with my parents at the time. Uh, so I invite you guys over. We watched the film. And uh, in, a, in an event that would forever change our lives. Uh, I think both of us were forever changed by that experience. For better or worse, I could not say. <laughs> Dude. So I, I remember uh, Haley actually brought it up because we were talking to, to some people about it i think mm-hmm. at the either at the party or when we mm-hmm. went to hollywood horror nights i can't quite remember yeah what it was but uh, you know Haley put it uh very bluntly like after that movie was over we were all kind of fucking speechless yeah we were all like oh, dude what the fuck did we just watch yeah and i could not for the life of me think of anything else for like a week you know the very next day i went to work i told all my coworkers about the movie I told all of my Warhammer friends about the movie. I told everybody about the fucking movie. This was had become my singular obsession. Um, so good. And I even like now, you know, I can't tell people yeah. that it's my favorite film <laughs> because <laughs> you I'm, have to be in a certain uh, audience. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, so I really uh, get off on the idea of like, figuring out someone's interest and then like picking a movie for them to watch that they haven't seen yet. Yeah. And like, and when I say go off, I don't mean sexually. Right, 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 <laughs> I just right. get like, like excited. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Cause I want to be like, I want to be like a tastemaker. I'm going to be like, right. listen, Oh, I know what you like. You should watch this movie. This is right up your alley. Yeah. And like, I just really like that. And, uh, I am forever chasing the high of introducing you to martyrs. Like I have never <laughs> hit a fucking homer like that ever again in my life. You know, it's this movie was made for me, man. And like very little, <laughs> very little has come out uh, since that has been so uh, singularly my obsession. Right. Um, I feel like you compare every movie to this too. I like do. every movie you like, you're like, you're like, it's no martyrs though. <laughs> no, I, I will say hereditary and, uh, talk to me did take real good swings at it. I agree. Well, uh, hereditary at least. Yeah. I, I, I you haven't seen talk to me yet. No, not yet. Yeah. But very ooh, soon. It's very soon. It's very such soon. a good movie. I, oh, it's so good. I can't wait. But, um, should I be terrified though? Actually? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. Cause once again, it, it doesn't, it, nothing unseats this. I can't, yeah. I can't imagine in my wildest dreams until we have like films that you plug into your brain so you can actually like <laughs> be there and yeah. almost like interact with what's going on. You can be flayed. Exactly. By, you can be the by virtual reality. You can be Anna at the end of the movie. <laughs> God. Um, I don't think that there's an, anything that's going to come close to this. That is like somebody who went in uh, to the filmmaking process and thinking to themselves, this is a story that I want to tell. And these are the things that I want to do to, to show like, to, I guess, how you say, uh, put a brutality to trauma or to show at what ends would humanity go to figure out what happens after we die Mm -hmm. or the death of hope. Like all of these, all of these things and more are in this film and done with an artist's brush. Right. In, in my opinion. And like, yeah, it's, it's hard to look at, but I, I, I guess that's what I find interesting. The movie is hard yeah. to look at, but you're getting something out of it. And it just, it, <sighs> it's doing all of those things so well. Like yes. Both it's, it's, it's a well-made movie. Like it's, it's very adequately made by people who are good at what they do, like by good filmmakers. Yeah. Um, and it's also it's like the, the, the cruelty has a point essentially. It's right. not just doing it to shock you. It's also like, there is more to it than like, there is actually a very delicate story being told about, you know, survivor's guilt and abuse and trauma and, and all these things, but also like, and there is even a more sinister plot lurking underneath all of it yeah that's revealed you know much much later something that i i want to compare this movie to and might be a weird comparison especially because like i have never played through the entire game but bloodborne because like bloodborne on the surface is you know a souls like game where you you kill vampires and werewolves Mm -hmm. and all that shit right but 
under the surface as you get more into it. Spoiler alert for Bloodborne. Yeah. If you have about seventy five percent of the way through the game, there is a famous kind of reveal. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Uh where it it all of these horrors are are nothing compared to the 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 root of evil at the bottom which is all these like uh, aberrations uh, the basically like cthulhu-esque uh, they're essentially eldritch horrors and yes. they have been everywhere you've been the entire time you just couldn't see them right yep. that's the reveal yeah, yeah i think so um but like it's 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 that the movie starts off doing kitschy shit that other horror movies do like you know the the figure that pops up out of nowhere and uh there's a demon that's chasing this girl why is there a demon chasing this girl and then the the movie puts that that trope on its head and reveals that there there's way more going on than oh you know there's some sort of supernatural thing it's all trying to come back and root itself into realism Mm -hmm. and fuck man it's so well done and like if this movie wasn't done well like that if it wasn't handled with such care i don't think it would be memorable i don't think it no. would ha- have had it's like it would be a schlocky gore fest yeah exactly yeah. i don't think it would have its claws in my fucking soul right. the way that it does right and what's hilarious is like neither of us are catholic or were raised catholic i was raised catholic wait really yeah. oh i'm sorry i gotta edit that out now. no <laughs> it's all good yeah <laughs> maybe no. that's why okay so Ooh, okay. Well, you having been raised what, Catholic. What does it have to do with... Uh, oh, with, Catholicism with... is rooted at the heart of this film. Really? Well, yeah. Where do you think martyrdom came from? They, well, I just they... thought it was... Okay. I just thought that was just, you know... How do you say? Uh, they were just using that 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 term. You know, I didn't think that it was... Yes it... and no. Yeah, okay. So, Catholicism is rooted in the idea of, like, suffering through your pain for salvation, essentially. Yeah. And that is definitely... It, to spoil this film a little bit, we have not done our, our summary yet. Yeah. Uh, but that is what we find out is happening is there is this group that wants to know what's on the other side. Like they want someone else to have a glimpse. And they believe that by torturing people beyond the limits of, you know, human capacity, yeah. that they will be able to glimpse the other side after they give up essentially. Yeah. And uh, they either start seeing things and go feral or – they see the other side and become completely zen and serene about it. Yeah, they no longer are within themselves. They look beyond. They look right. be past the the veil, the curtain, yeah. and see what's what's out there. But none of them have been able to speak. And so this this group has been for the last seventeen years capturing young women and torturing the fuck out of them in order to have them transcend the the shell of the body right. and to see uh what the afterlife is and get some sort of recording uh for it right so i never like what having seen this movie three times now i never got a religious uh tinge from the group that's doing this i never thought about that because it's call, uh, almost apostasy to uh try to divine what's really like t- to question god's word of you know, once you die, there there is a heaven. They're almost like trying to peek behind that. So I don't, I don't like. I think they're trying to make an apostle out of Anna. I would argue. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe they. It's not overtly stated that they're religious. No, it's um, not. Yeah, but they are all clearly. They have a sense in the afterlife in the way that like Catholics would essentially. Sure. Um, and who, you know, you you look at the history of Catholicism. And there were a lot of people tortured in the name of that religion. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, The Spanish Inquisition is the most immediate one that comes to mind. They did some truly heinous things to other human beings. Um, Because I've been to like a museum where you can see all of the, you know, some of it is played up. Yeah. uh, But they did actually like torture people and do awful things, you know, like, and that is a lot of the torture that is inflicted on, on the people in this film. Was, oh, are reminiscent of that? Yeah. Oh shit. Tortures that were inflicted on people, you know, people that are are given sainthood mm-hmm. uh in Catholicism. Yeah. You know, were flayed and, and crucified, you know, obviously Jesus. Yeah. And so on and so forth, you know. that's where I'm I'm getting the the religious uh imagery from. Well now that you and also, I it. believe the director was raised Catholic, and he explicitly stated that, like, you know, I have a lot of Catholic guilt. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I would say, uh, now that you mention it, um, in one of the most final scenes after they have flayed Anna, spoiler warning, um, <laughs> they've got her hooked up to that 
that metal thing that's holding she her up. is crucified isn't she no she's not oh, I she's, thought she was crucified. Her, no they've they've got her hanging up uh, on some metal bars but her legs are touching the ground right and they put the the light on her to <laughs> make her 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 muscles and stuff burn yeah um but the the way that she is posed is very reminiscent of of jesus on the cross i never right. caught that right but that's that's a interesting you learn something new every day <laughs> absolutely so i did uh some digging on this film yeah let's hear the about digging the production and it came away with some things uh, that I'm going to have to drop here. Hell yeah. So the special effects supervisor for the film, Benoit Lestang, uh, Lestang, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, he unfortunately committed suicide prior to the film's release. Why is that? Uh, it's it's unclear. Um, is it unclear, quink, quink? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I don't want to make any, cast any aspersions. Yeah. It does sound like the production of this film was a little troubled. Oh, yeah? Maybe, I'm not shocked. Maybe I should start saying allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. There were some things that went wrong. Um, Ooh, what went wrong? The director has explicitly stated that he had a lot of problems with the special effects and with the lead actresses. And apparently he had to keep them isolated uh, so that they wouldn't like become friendly and bond and have a good time. He wanted them to be frustrated and at high emotional you know, extremes. Okay. Um, also, it sounds like he wasn't a great guy to work with. Oh, okay. Uh, the direct, the writer-director. Um, one of the lead actresses, uh, Mylene, uh, who plays Lucy. Oh, yeah, she plays Lucy. Uh, she recalled in an interview that the director was short tempered. Okay. So I have to, I want to dance around this carefully cause I don't want to say something that could get me in trouble. Sure. Uh, but on Ghostland, uh, the writer and director of, of Martyrs, his, yeah. his most recent film, uh, his name is Pascal Laguerre. Laguerre. Thank you. <laughs> I can't do that last name. Um, there was a scene that called for a young actress. Uh, she was like 20 at the time, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, she was supposed to bang on a glass window. And he told her it would be safe. She explicitly asked, is this safe to do? And he said, yes, of course. And of course it shattered. Uh, yes. As she's banging on it, it shatters and she falls into the glass and cuts her face and her neck. Oh my God. I know about this. She you has, heard about this? yeah, her it happened is, just a few years ago. It's yes, fucked up forever. Permanently scarred. You can, I did not realize it's the same guy. Yeah. You can look her up. Uh, her name, I have it here. I'm so sorry. Uh, her name is Taylor Hickson. Yeah. Uh, you can look up her face. You can see the scarring. Uh, yeah. That's it's, on her face. it's like from her nose down her cheek all the way to her neck yes. and stuff. And yeah. she is, yeah, is a young and up and coming actress. And this is clearly, uh, you know, changed the direct trajectory of her, of her career, life yeah, you forever. Could say. holy shit uh she did open a lawsuit against the director i don't i couldn't find what happened with that lawsuit yeah. however it did lead to uh the production company of the film was fined or first so the complaint was open against the production company and the production company pled guilty to uh and let me make sure i read this correctly here failing to ensure the safety and welfare of a worker uh, and they were fined $40,000. I, be I believe explicitly for this incident. Yeah. Um, yes, it was. Okay. I remember I read the article and they had the picture of the actress on there with her scar. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not great. No, that's it's not, not great. great that was the last film he made and it came out in 2018. Fuck. So I'm wondering if now maybe he can't direct a film again. Uh, he is probably. It's probably done. Like a little blacklisted, you could say. Yeah. You know, uh, it's not like I don't. His other films aren't as extreme. Sure. As this. Yeah. From, from what I understand, I haven't seen them. I also I don't know if I care them. to. <laughs> yeah. This does seem like the rare high mark in his career, too. Oh, man. It's just like it's Neil Blomkamp all over again, man. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't his first movie. It's no. like his second or third. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. Okay. Interestingly enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, he did write this movie, admittedly, while he was extremely depressed and suicidal. He said, oh, no way. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A happy person does not write this movie. No. Um, the film generated controversy in its home country of France after receiving an 18 plus rating, which is completely unheard of for a French genre film. Really? Like, that is like getting an X rating in America. Oh. Which like does occasionally happen. happen. Yeah, but not too. But not in France. Like they're very lenient yeah. with that sort of stuff. Uh, so after multiple appeals, which were eventually also joined by the French Directors Guild and the French Ministry of Culture, uh, the rating was eventually changed to 16 plus. This was such a big deal yeah. in France at the time. Yeah. There's even a documentary about it made, that was made about, you know, the production company fighting this. Oh, that's this awesome. Yeah. And it's it was like the biggest battle the director had to put up with. Um, 
And after the film premiered at Cannes, uh, the Weinstein Company purchased the distribution rights for the film uh, to for North American distribution rights. I should be explicitly gotcha. clear here. However, uh, Bob Weinstein, brother of Harvey Weinstein, mm-hmm. uh, which you should all know. If you don't, please Google him. Because uh, <laughs> I, again, don't want to say anything that could get me sued. Yeah. Uh, but uh, look him up. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Bob Weinstein was so repulsed by the film after they bought it that he decided not to release it theatrically in North America. <laughs> oh, that's why I didn't get to see it. That makes sense. Nobody did until it came out on DVD eventually. Right on. Um, I've breaking bad news for you. What's that? Heels is canceled. <laughs> Fuck! You can leave this in. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> God damn it. Oh, I gotta tell Haley that. No! I'm so sorry. Fuck! <laughs> I gotta tell Haley. Hold on a second. Oh man. God damn it. I'm so mad, dude. Fuck. <sighs> How do I go on, dude? How do I fucking go this on? This episode couldn't get more depressing. <laughs> I know. Dude, you what you literally uh heard my heart break in live in real time. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you I have asked I specifically asked you yes. if you would like to do the summary for yep. Martyrs today because I did not want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm okay with it because, uh, A, uh, I love this film. I figured if of any movie, this is the one you would enjoy yeah. having that pleasure for. No, absolutely. Um, so, you know, we've danced around a lot of the, the stuff that happens in the film. So let's just get right through it. So uh, the movie opens up with a uh, what looks like to be a young girl wearing a really raggedy uh, tank top and some underwear. Uh, it looks like she's been beaten. Her head's shaved, uh, and she's running out of a, a warehouse. And the camera holds on to her for a good while before cutting. But then we get like a super cut of her being found. Um, her being taken to a, I guess like a child's home, not like an orphanage, but like a home for what is probably like troubled youths. We see a couple of kids with like Down syndrome there. Um, but we get a super cut of her being brought there and then meeting a friend. And then those two girls kind of bonding and growing up with each other. And then um, also like reports, like the reporters going to the facility and saying, you know, the, this girl and like four others were, were found here. The four others obviously are dead. Um, and they're trying to figure out what the organization or why this was happening. Right. And then we get a 15 years later, it, the the camera kind of goes to a nice home. There's an yes. older blonde woman. Um, I want to say that you there's know, two teenagers fighting. It looks like it's intense at first. Oh, that's right. Yes, it starts yeah. off with the two teenagers that are fighting. It looks like it's intense at first, but then the younger of the two is a younger girl. Um, she starts laughing, mm-hmm. and uh, it looks like they're fighting over a love letter that the older brother had gotten. And uh, the family kind of has, you know, there's a the, a mom, a uh, dad. The two kids, um, you found out recently that the daughter uh, either got a scholarship or won like a competition for swimming. Doing so, the, yeah, it was a the swimming competition. Stroke. There's a newspaper article uh, clipped on the fridge for it. Yeah. And so they're having like, you know, banter, just like normal, uh, you know, uh, chiding that families would do like the. the Around, yeah, they're having breakfast and all sitting and talking. Yeah, together. The, the son seems to be kind of a fuck up. You know, they wanted him to do law school, but now he wants to do like. He wants to be like a baker. Yeah, he wants to be a baker. And they're and, teasing him for it. Which yeah, is, well, because yeah. I think that, that it's uh, because his girlfriend's also like into baking or whatever. Mm-hmm. The school's close by. And so, you know, basic fam- family shit and the uh, the door, I, I think there was a doorbell rings or there's doorbell a knock. Yep, yeah, and, the dad, and uh, the dad gets up and goes to it and he's immediately executed. Blown uh, the fuck away with a shotgun. On the spot, yeah, by shotgun. And you see uh, a woman who has uh, similar scars to the, the girl from, from the beginning of the film and you can obviously tell that this is Lucy uh, back for revenge. And so we get a, <laughs> we get like a good five minute uh, clip of... Uh, this almost rabid uh, woman, uh, you know, just tearing away at uh, this family. She, yeah, she kills the dad almost immediately. The mom tries to run away and she blasts her in the side. Um, the the sister gets away, but the son is, you know, kind of frozen in fear because his mom just got shot. And uh, she rounds the corner, reloads the gun and asks him, how old are you? And he replies, 18. And she kind of like, you can see there's a little bit of inner, inner turmoil in her. You could tell she 
she doesn't want to do this, but she knows she kind of has to. Yeah, and she, she goes, shoots do you have any idea what, what your they parents did, did. did to me? Yeah, and he just sits there and it kind of has an unreadable look on his face. Like you yeah. can't, you you don't know if he's unsure or not. Yeah, and, and then uh, she, she just him. executes him too. Mm-hmm. And then she goes and she uh, tries to hunt down the the little sister. Uh, she finds her underneath uh, the parents' bed. She shoots into the bed, misses her. She makes a run for it, but Lucy is uh, too fast and guns her down. And so within the span of like 10 minutes, you get um, kind of a an open-ended start, a good, I think, succinct uh, summary of lucy's backstory about meeting anna how they are so close it's like really a good way to show that anna is ride or die for lucy and then an execution uh thing all in the span of like 10 minutes is fucking wild it, yeah it's literally like the 12 minute mark when she, i think she goes to call anna and she's like i did it and she's like what do you mean you did it you were just supposed to watch well, them and she's like i did it i murdered them. and she's like are you sure that it was them like <laughs> oh, you were only supposed to look and and whatnot but yeah you know she kind of confirms that uh it was the same people on the paper but anyways so as anna is like okay well i need to come get you yeah. where, where are you and she's like i'm at the house i'm at their house and so she goes to the house but while we're having you know anna drive lucy is starting to be plagued uh by something there's something lurking just beyond the other room and um uh, this like almost fiendish creature it's a i mean it's humanoid in nature it's got scars all over it um starts attacking uh lucy lucy is you know shooting wildly in, uh, around her um she's got a was that um the shaving shaving oh knife? she has a straight razor straight razor that's what it is yeah so this this thing Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, there was kind of alluded to before the 15 year uh, flashback. I, I totally forgot that after the the um, the little brief synopsis of what happened with, uh, you know, Lucy meeting Anna, that they have a brief conversation and this thing shows up uh, to attack young. Uh, we skipped right over that. Yeah, that's my bad. Yeah. So it's, it's such a short in thing. the prologue before the title card. Uh, yeah, we see the two girls in the sanitarium or what have Whatever. you. It's we not, are, it's not stated what it is. Yeah. Um, but she's being plagued by this like feral woman essentially. And um, it's not explicitly stated if it's real or not, uh, but Lucy is definitely seeing it. Yeah. And, um, and she's being cut by this thing. This thing's cutting right, her. It, it is attacking her. So after she gets off the phone with Anna and she's murdered the whole family, she's in their house and she starts seeing it. And it looks like to me, it looks like Anna Oh, does it? Well, this is, I'm posing this as a question to you. Yeah. Maybe we should wait till later in the movie. Sure. For me to ask you this, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't... Let's, that's, that's let's wait till that's we fine. get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this thing, you know, attacks Lucy and, and gets the straight razor and starts digging into Lucy's back. It's oh, yeah, fucking she's slicing her up. gruesome. Yeah. But um, eventually, Anna shows up and, and Lucy is uh, calmed of this thing this thing is no longer there Mm -hmm. and also anna has come prepared it it, it, you can tell that just with context clues these two people have been with each other for a very long time because anna has stitches alcohol and padding in a box in the back of her car Mm -hmm. she's used to this happening to lucy and lucy's kind of doesn't understand why this is still happening because she thought to herself all these people need to be dead Mm -hmm. revenge needs to be exacted so that this malicious spirit will go away right and oh and i think about this point she unfurls the newspaper article yes and shows and shows that she saw their picture in the newspaper and recognized them and that's how she found them yeah exactly it's the exact same newspaper article that uh is was on the fridge yeah yeah. holds frame she's like i saw them and i knew it was them and that's how she was able to track them down yep and uh, they drag the bodies into the bathroom and they try to figure out how they're going to clean everything up because, of course, the police are going to end up being there. Mm-hmm. Like, Anna's trying to think, what's the next steps to to get away from this? Right. And as Lucy, I think, is uh, in a different room sleeping, um, Anna finds out that the mom's not dead. And so... Does that already happen at this point? It's around that time because uh, Lucy thinks something's up. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So Lucy, I think, gets calmed down and, and takes a shower and goes to bed. Yep. 
Anna is like dragging the bodies one by one outside to a pit, a pit. to bury them. Yeah. And where, I like, think it's just the mom and the daughter are left. Yes. And that's when the mom comes back. Comes back, like, yeah. Wakes back up. Because she only got kind of clipped in the side. Yeah. And um, she starts like, you know, screaming and gasping for help and stuff. Yep. And Anna's like, shh. You got to sh- shut the fuck up. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're going to die if you don't shut up right now. Yep. Lucy hears this and comes downstairs to check on her. And Anna... She passes her deceptive role. Right. <laughs> yeah. She comes walking out with the dead daughter and she's like, I thought I heard something. She's like, no, 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 go back to bed. It's fine. Yeah. Tries to blow her off, you know, make her not think anything about it. And I think she gets attacked again by yeah, so the, the feral I, thing. I forgot that what this thing was supposed to be a representation of. So I called it Dark Lucy, but she gets attacked by Dark Lucy again. Um, and uh, she gets away from it. And while this is happening, Anna's trying to get the, the mom to safety right and lucy sees it her obviously grabs a sledgehammer and beats her brains in yeah just throws over anna and over off of her and yeah. just starts obliterating her skull it's yes. brutal and then um i want to say that uh between those when uh, lucy does go to sleep you get the vision of her escaping you see this blonde woman um you know punching her in the face trying to feed her trying but to feed then her. abusing her yeah. exactly and her getting away right that's when she's able uh, lucy's able to make her escape because the woman falls the the mom yeah she like kind of pushes her and she trips and twists her ankle yeah and she like drags herself to uh away from her and starts rubbing her legs because her legs are so like numb from just sitting in the right. same spot for oh, she like, evidently hasn't used her legs because she's been tied to a chair exactly yeah. And uh, as she's running away, she goes into a different room. Well, she so she looks down the hallway, oh, sees the exit, but then she hears like moans that's down the was. hall in the other yeah. direction. So she decides to investigate and finds another girl about her age tied to a chair with scars all over her body. Right. One of her eyes uh, was beaten in like hard. Yeah. And um, after you you see this dream the camera finally holds on this this creature that's been attacking yeah. Lucy. Well, sorry, to finish that yeah. flashback, oh, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. she looks at the, the this girl in the chair and she's right. like, I'm sorry, like yeah. I can't. And she just turns around and runs out the exit. Exactly. And gets away because that's the scene we see in the beginning of the film now. We, we're, we're putting the pieces together slowly throughout the film. Yeah. But then, yeah, we cut back to when uh, Lucy has obliterated the skull of the mother and... Uh, and she is again attacked by the feral woman. Yep. Uh, however, this Anna is both. She's been shoved by Lucy, so like I think she she's hurt a her little, legs. She's she a little walk. out of it, yeah. And she's like crawling, but she's also separated by some furniture that I think fell. Yes. So she can see. That's right. Cause Lucy, she because because Anna was pissed. Not Anna. Lucy was pissed. Lu- Lu- yeah, and about she shoved her to the side and yeah, hurt and, her, and, yeah. and threw a bunch of shit on the ground too. She yeah. was destroying the house after she smashed it in the lady's head. So Anna and Lucy are, are separated, but like by a barrier, but they can see each other. Yes. And Lucy gets attacked by the feral woman again. Yes. Uh, and and it, you you get to finally see that this the the feral woman looks like the the girl that Lucy left behind. Okay, that was what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is it Lucy or is it intentionally that woman? Like I, I the... want to say it's intentionally the other woman. Now, for and the only reason why I say this is because the eye is what's supposed to give it away. Oh, the, okay. The, the, well, Lucy also had a she, messed up eye when she, she got did, out, too. She yeah. did, but she still has it. Uh, right. This thing, I think that... This thing is supposed to, as you said, be survivor's guilt. Right. Like, I think it's a manifestation manifestation. of survivor's guilt. Exactly. Because we see as this first, uh, so Lucy, uh, you know, the feral woman walks up to her and it almost seems like they're bonding for a moment there because they walk up and they kind of go head to head and kind of just like hold each other for a Mm -hmm. moment. But then uh, she takes the straight race with the feral woman and starts cutting Lucy's wrist. Yeah. And Anna's watching this and we see Anna's point of view and we realize the feral woman is not there. It yeah. is just Lucy. It's just Lucy. So it is all, it's it's her. Yeah, it's her. But it is her having, I you know, I think the film is implying that her survivor's guilt is manifesting as a, uh, is it still called disassociative disorder? I think it's, yeah, dissociative identity disorder. I, it was called some, something else in yeah. the 90s and now i think i believe it's did is what it's referred to as yeah. in the dsm-5 uh, yeah it's been a long time since i've taken psychology <laughs> know, but right? that's what i remember <laughs> well and she asks she right before all of this happens you know she asks will i ever be free of this right you know and, and anna is trying to you know to 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 you know 
placate her and tells her yes, but clearly it's not. It's not going. Yeah, away. the only way to to be free of it yeah. is to finally succumb to right. And so Lucy does. Uh, you know, she runs. She escapes from the feral woman who's like cutting her up. She jumps out a window. Uh, and then Anna goes out the window to yell at her, and she's like, "Lucy, what are you doing?" And then Lucy takes out a box cutter and slices her own throat, and that's it. And she's dead. And, and uh, we're like at the half an hour mark. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's literally half a half an hour. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Anna is thoroughly upset, uh, but she brings brings her friend's body inside and, and cleans her up and wraps her up in a nice little like a sleeping bag blanket thing. Yeah, and uh, lays her on the couch, and then she calls her mom. That's right. Uh, yes, just the, out of the blue with the phone in the house still. And yes, she's still in the house of the family. Yeah, that she has doesn't been murdered. She hasn't left. She <laughs> no. spent the whole night there. It's been two or three days now. <laughs> I think um, two days. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so she picks up the uh, the landline and calls her mom. And uh, we hear her mom just like berating her for calling her out of nowhere after, you know, years of no contact. And uh, she just starts like saying like, oh, you think I don't think about what I did to you? Like not a day goes by that like I don't regret what I did. But like. Oh, I bet you're still with that that other girl, aren't you? Like she's no good bitch pervert and all this stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, but then she's, you know, she's very the daughter Anna. She's being very timid, but she like can't get through to her mom. No. Yeah. But then she starts hearing something. It's like a piece of candlestick falls down or something. Yeah. So, so something like possesses her to explore the house. You know. Well, it, it's because she see something fall down on that mantle was that what it was because yeah. yeah underneath the mantle is like a whole nother facility well that so she opens right. up a cupboard yeah. and finds it is a like fake wa- false wall into an underground chamber yep and she walks by like a bunch of pictures of yes of of like old pictures of dying people people that have been tortured yes. specifically well not all of them not not all the the people on there uh have because some of them were uh like the one was tortured, uh, yeah. Lang, I think it was the last name there, but one person got into a car accident. Oh, okay. You know, one person, they're just on the verge of death, yes. but not fully dead. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, and she's like, what the, what the fuck is this? Yes. You know? And she is peering around with a flashlight and finds another room and inside. Well, so hold oh, on before yes. that, because there's another, there's another underground facility in this facility. Right. It has layers because she finds another, like a ladder. There's a ladder. After and, the staircase. And it's got locks and she slaps the locks and goes all the way down. And then right. she climbs all the way down. And, and it's a very like nicely built, like, and it's European. So yeah, like, and it's sterile. It doesn't feel slapstick or like, like a, uh, like the guy's basement in Silence of the Lambs. Like, right. No, it's actually like sterile and like very clean and modern. Yeah. To be clear, because I feel feel like that is very important. Like there was money in this, yep. and I don't mean in the film's budget. I mean like the organization who who made this house. Right. Well, we don't know that yet. But. Right. 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 But but, <laughs> but no, this no. house is extremely nice and modern. And now this like serial killer basement we're exploring is also extremely right. nice. The, the 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 film did imp- did imply that there is an organization because yeah. the, those properties were owned by something. The warehouses that. Uh, Lucy oh, I had even by this from. point you're saying exactly yeah. okay, but yeah. now you know they're like okay well we can't do this in abandoned places so let's buy up property right. and make houses to have shit like this happen you know this might be a slight spoiler but we've, we've kind of spoiled the movie already yeah so in the near the beginning yes. when uh anna and lucy are are little girls in this place yeah there's a guy that's got a- yeah she's being interviewed by some men in like big black suits yeah and one dude's got a cut down his uh, eye yeah and the doctor says like don't worry these are very nice men yeah they're not cops if no. you look at their uniforms they're not cops yeah i think it's the organization making sure that she's not gonna say there's nothing leading them back to them yeah i i got yeah. the same feeling from it too yeah because watching it again i was like oh, oh yeah you just think those are the cops the first time you watch this no it's enough it's fucking not but yes I, oh so what very small tangent. Sure. I listened to another podcast about this movie. That's right. Yeah. Earlier today. I don't want to name it because I'm going to kind of trash talk it. A bit. <laughs> it's fine. But they they just like the whole point of that show is they just recap movies that people were too scared to watch. Yeah. And um, they get so many things wrong. And one of the things that I really was like upset about was when they talk about that opening scene. Yes. She just says it's the cops interviewing the little girl trying to figure out like who did this so they can <laughs> catch him. And I was like and she I was like, oh, maybe she's like trying not to spoil like give it away and she's teeing this up and when we find out about the organization she's going to come back and be like remember those guys well that was them no it's i think they just thought that was just cops i was like oh man and watch it among other things they got a lot of stuff wrong so i was like okay maybe 
they weren't watching that closely or they were just basing their recap on like another recap that they read. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm so no, sorry. It's all good. No, 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 it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, so Anna is, you know, spelunking uh, through this facility and she f- finds another woman uh, yep. chained up. Uh, she's got like a metal chastity belt on her. She's got a metal right. uh, thing on her head. That's she like, actually looks worse than, than how it, we saw yeah. Lucy. Yeah. And she looks yeah. worse than uh, how we saw the uh, the lady that Lucy left behind. Even, even the feral woman. Yeah. And she's got like a this big old scar on her wrist um, that you think is from being chained, but it's from something else. Right. She's got scars all across her body. She's emaciated. Oh, um, she's just horrible to look at. Yeah. Man. It's that this is when like at this point in the movie, I was like, yo, what the fuck is going on? What yeah. is going on with this fucking movie? And, and, and it just gets more wild from here. Let, so up? let me ask you this. Yes. Do you think that that is the same woman that Lucy saw? No. You don't think so? I don't believe so. Okay. And um, I I think that there's something that mm, the Mademoiselle uh, says that yeah. alludes to her being somebody else. Well, is it because she's like, we've done this so many times and only four of them in the last, you know, yeah. what, year or something have actually reached this point or something yes. like that? Yes, and okay, they've been yeah. doing it for 17 years. Right. Um, And this one has a name too. Her name's Sarah. Sarah de Gatelier. Oh, do, when do we get that name? Uh, Mademoiselle uh, says that after uh, oh, after this way. next segment here. Okay, yeah. So, but um, yeah, this is this is the most wild shit. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Anna gets this uh, just terribly uh, uh, just the most abused person ever. on planet Earth. Yeah, somehow she, she gets her up the ladder somehow. Like uh, when she gets her out of the facility, I'm like, we, how, yeah. how the fuck did she do that? But regardless, we just see her coming out of the cupboard, you know, the, yeah. the fake uh, wall or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, she's taken her out. Uh, obviously, Anna has dealt with self harm before. So she does her best to disinfect the wounds. Um, she prepares a bath for this lady. Oh, but she's so scared yeah you know, she's terrified yeah. she wants but she, everything is is a new to her too because she yeah. has been in this room for probably God knows for years long. yeah and even just the bath water like she's screaming yeah it's stinging because she's got yeah. so many open well, sores that, and shit that too right her body is i'm sure lacking moisture as well because yeah. every time that we see any of these girls uh in the situation their lips are cracked from from right. being too dry because They're they have no moisture yeah um so one thing i wanted to uh also tie back to the to the beginning uh, of the movie is uh, there's a comment that is made about Anna, about her being motherly, even at a young age, because like she, she takes to Lucy and right. wants to be a, t- a caretaker for her. And throughout the movie, you, you see her, you know, being a caretaker for anybody who's in need, right. you know, whether it be uh, Lucy or the woman who tortured Lucy or this lady here. And so she tries to figure out how to get this uh, metal blinders, off of this woman's head and you come to find out that it has been hammered in with large industrial staples Mm -hmm. and so she has to pop the staples out with a screwdriver and it's the camera never turns away you see these things popping out blood coming out it is fucking nasty and then when she finally gets the the helmet off it's been on her head for so long that there's pus underneath that is like kind of still connects to the the mm-hmm. thing after it's been removed and uh, she's missing so much hair and it's yeah. just ugh, it's disgusting it's brutal the, just the sight of her is horrifying. horrifying like it's worse than like a monster in yeah. like a film like there's nothing that could be more upsetting than the sight essentially like it's brutal it's nasty and then you know when you think that oh this, this person at least is going to be taken care of hmm. she immediately starts freaking out she gets a hold of i want to say either the screwdriver or a knife i can't remember how she does it but she starts digging into her skin so uh, oh it, did anna walk away anna leaves her i think in the bathroom to, to and soak. then goes and is like sitting with uh, lucy's body and it's like it was, i'm yeah. so sorry i doubted you because she wasn't sure oh, that's right yeah I, we we skipped over this but yeah there's a lot of points where Anna is doubting that this family actually did it. Yes. She's a little worried that Lucy just got carried away. Yeah. But now she, there is no doubt in her mind. No. Obviously. Yeah, she knows <laughs> that that what what she did was was justified. Right. And um and she's like sitting with Lucy's body and she's like I'm so sorry. And she hears something and goes to investigate down the hallway and sees like blood stains all over the walls because that's anywhere the Sarah this this new abused woman yeah. she's found goes she's just blood everywhere. 
Uh, but she finds her in like a bedroom with a kitchen knife. Yeah, she's just, just trying to digging into her skin, cut off her her skin, like yeah. slicing her wrists. Yeah, but not in a way to like cut the veins. Just like she's just trying to cut her wrist. Yeah, she's she's digging in there. But anyways, anyway, so she does that. Anna tries to stop her. Right, she tries to intervene. Yeah. Uh, this lady uses probably all the strength in her body to push Anna away mm-hmm. to continue digging. She smacks her head on the wall, starts running her her forehead against the wall and shit blood's going everywhere. She's just l- lost it. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's clearly in just so much both emotional and physical pain clearly yeah. like and she's plagued by God knows what. What? Yeah. And then uh, she runs down the hall and you see her fucking head almost explode. She gets shot in the fucking head. It's just a gunshot wound to the face yeah. suddenly. And we're just like, what the fuck's going on now? And then there's a bunch of people in black suits. And I'm, and when we say black suits, like we don't mean like suits and ties. We yeah. mean like Gestapo, like yeah. black leather jackets, black button ups and black pants. Yeah. Like imagine a modern day, like, you know, Gestapo, like ss uniform essentially. right that's what it is yeah it's clearly supposed to emulate that I and anna is like gobsmacked she's you're like what the fuck is this and they beat the shit out of her <laughs> and handcuff her and take her back uh well they start interrogating her immediately like, oh that's right yeah yeah like, what like, are you doing here we've been trying to call this family for hours yeah like, what's going on like who are you who are these bodies yeah and uh anna gives her name and lucy's name and, and then they, they kind of, piece could they they piece together what's happened from there so yeah. they drag they, her to the, yeah, they, the torture basement and yeah. handcuff her to the rain rail yeah they take it well they take her to the 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 part in between the first entry yeah thing, yeah and then they like so dispassionately take all of the bodies that are in the uh the house and just dump them in the pit mm-hmm. like they just drop the body kick them in um even the the their supposed co-worker Tr- slapped her on the ground kicked her in mm-hmm. uh they have no regard for anything really i guess this is what the director's trying to show and then um anna finally meets like the director they called her the mademoiselle it's this older woman that's wearing like a, i don't know what the fuck that thing on her head is but it's a like what what is that fashion thing that's it's on not her a head fez right it's not a fez no it's some sort of like wrap um not a like a not a turban but no i don't know what the fuck you would call it it doesn't matter yeah she looks interesting she's an interesting looking lady she's a character she's a fancy old french lady essentially. yeah exactly yeah. you can smell her perfume through the screen <laughs> yeah but uh she without like any hesitation tells anna the whole shtick you know uh she just immediately starts showing her pictures and telling her stories of every person that's in this picture, like this lady uh, was taken off of chemo. Nothing was working. And you know, the cancer was taking her and she, you know, she look at her eyes. This lady was uh, tortured and, um, and pale, like decapitated, but she wasn't dead yet. Look at her eyes, you know, all these terrible things. And she explains that the look on their face is very reminiscent of this person from like the 1600s uh, that was martyred, quote unquote. And the, this organization thinks that there is a point between life and death where the body after enduring so much sees beyond itself sees beyond the the curtain and their whole goal is to do that and they find that the the most uh receptive vessels are young women not children Mm -hmm. uh, because they tried that apparently but younger uh women and she you know talks about how they've been doing it for like 17 years, how they've only had like a couple that have reached martyrdom, but weren't able to speak about it. Um, she gives off, you know, names, including these like, uh, when she talks about like the, the adverse effects, the people who don't reach martyrdom, uh, when I guess they say that as when somebody is tortured so much and they don't achieve martyrdom, uh, something else happens to them. They're mm-hmm. plagued by visions. That's you the, know the key phrase I remember was plagued by, by visions. visions. Yeah, <laughs> and so she's like the woman that um you helped Sarah de Gautelier or whatever. She uh saw roaches Under on her, her skin, skin. Yeah. and so she tried to tear it off. That's all she could yeah. see is roaches on her skin. And she's like the the girl that you were traveling with was she plagued by visions? Mm-hmm. And you know that's when you come to realize that the the thing that Lucy was seeing was some sort of manifestation and Mm. obviously it was a manifestation of guilt. Um, and, but yeah, she like comes out and says everything because she knows what's about to happen next. And what's about to happen next is they, they take Anna down into the torture chamber, chain her up, 
um, lever and just a tank top and underwear. Um, and we have a long, like 15, 20 minute montage of her just getting beaten, uh, hair shaved, uh, degraded, um, you know, all, all of the most awful things you can think to be put on film except, and I will say, yeah, they do not do sexual assault. Exactly. To, to this film's credit, which I feel very weird saying, yeah, there is no, uh, sexual assault or even implication yeah. of any sexual violence. Uh, and I think even in the beginning of the film, uh, when the doctors are going over That's what right. they, they found said that in she Lucy, wasn't they were like, she was not sexually assaulted. Yeah. Um, and it's like everything but, though. I yeah, mean, I know. I think, well, you know, let's... But at least, let, I, I will have to say, to, <laughs> I'm a glad at least the film doesn't go there. Yeah. Because that would have been a bridge I, too far. I think, yeah, <laughs> I think if they did, um, I think that would be too much. I, yeah, that would be too far. Yeah. Uh, you would lose any of the the messaging right. or the symbolism to anything uh in this movie if you if you did have uh, anything like that so yeah you're you're i think you're right and i will say there is one other film that is often you know said in the same breath as this uh as far as like it's not silo is it uh, no um but as far as like extreme films that oh. like you know edge lordy people try to like one up each other with yeah and it is the complete opposite. It is a Serbian film. Oh yeah, and you told me you've told me about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not covering we're not that for the podcast. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you know, if you want to look that up on your own volition, uh, Godspeed. <laughs> but um, you do not go with my blessing. No. I'll say that uh, that movie was a movie made by freaks for freaks. I've never seen it, uh, and I have no interest. in I, seeing Please it. don't. Yeah, no one should ever see that film. Yeah. It should not have been made. I I mean I. It's weird to say that, but it. <laughs> It's it's awful, uh, but I digress. That's all good. But yeah, um, you see, uh, you see, Anna just the death of hope is is what I wrote down. You know, there's a there's an excellent scene where one of her would be torturers uh, takes her chains off and has the the ladder down and leans against the the wall in between Anna and the ladder just to see what she would do. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, she still goes for it. They they they're trying to break her spirit. Yeah, they're constantly. Yeah, doing things to reinforce the idea that there is no hope. Exactly. You know, yeah. and I didn't catch this the the first two times um, uh, watching this movie, but the third time is Anna does start seeing visions, but she starts f- seeing visions of Lucy, and they are a way to help her through mm-hmm. uh, this. It's like the one human connection she has left. Yeah. You know. Um, there's parts where she ch- attempts to fight back, even after, you know, the 15 minute montage of her getting her ass beat, um, you know, to no avail. She gets slammed in the wall and yeah. kneed in the face and all that other uh, jazz. But eventually she becomes complicit. Right. You she know, docile, you know, to the point where they can literally like uncuff her and let her sit there and they know that she's not going to run away exactly or even fight or anything yeah and i think what there's one uh, the the ending to well not the ending but close to the ending of her suffering she's sitting i think against the chair that has a hole in it for her to piss in and uh the a newer lady comes in to i guess check on her Mm -hmm. and like you know i maybe she's watching her i can't quite remember what uh, exactly is happening yeah we skipped over the intense sponge bath oh yeah yeah the and violent sponge bath yeah. it, not only is, it's like so inhuman too mm-hmm. like it, there's no words being exchanged between these two people the person who's cleaning uh anna's uh, doing it very dispassionately it's uh, no it's not done with care it's no. done with violence essentially yeah. yeah um but anyways yeah uh the scene that i'm thinking of you know anna's eyes are you know clouded o- not clouded over but um, kind of glazed over i would say no, no, no you can't even see them because she's been punched in the face so, oh, right, so much right um it's bruised over that's what it is yeah but uh you know the lady comes in to check on her and she like reaches up and touches this lady's face you know like in a very kind way and Mm -hmm. this is like a sing symbol not symbol uh, a signal to this woman that i think the next step is ready to begin Mm -hmm. and uh yeah they make preparations and tell anna you know your suffering is almost over (laughs) and what do they do they take her into the next room that's still down there (laughs) And they hook her up to this this machine that holds uh, her limbs out, 
Uh, they cut off whatever remaining clothes that she had and they flay her. Mm -hmm. They take all of her skin except for her face off. She does not have ears anymore. She does not have uh, breasts anymore. She has nothing muscle but tissue. muscle tissue and veins she looks like an anatomy textbook and my god uh, uh, the first time i saw this i was blown mm. away at at just like how graphic it was it was like so unreal and like i think we were screaming when we yeah first watched, watched this it, yeah. you know over a decade ago yeah and like it, you know it it's the lady who's playing anna is already tiny she's already like a, a tiny woman and it's it's amazing that they were able to make a skin like a believable skin suit for her to wear to make her look even smaller it was even unreal. for uh like the feral woman that lucy sees and yeah. for sarah yeah. they have to be wearing something like morph suits that are made to look like scarred and cut skin yeah. and it's just like but they also are extremely tiny gaunt yeah that it's like shocking how well the special effects are done yeah um uh but again you know the horrifying special effects in this film were done uh by a man who, who killed, killed himself, himself. Uh, yeah. before the film was released so i that just adds a <sighs> an eerie thing very to it. Yeah. Eerie, yeah extremely odd layer to this film but yeah so they string her up um she is posed very much like a jesus and she mm -hmm. stares off beyond herself and and all of the the people working uh are kind of you know excited they make a phone call they say yes she's been in the state for hours mm -hmm. you need to come here quickly while she's still alive mademoiselle shows up um they've got uh anna in i think it's a it's like a liquid bath i don't know what's in there but i'm sure it's there to numb the muscle tissue like i can't imagine any liquid being uh like being on exposed muscle feeling good yeah I, I couldn't speak to what it is. Yeah, I have no idea what it, it is. She's just in some kind of like a chamber sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Mademoiselle leans into her and Lucy, Lucy starts, oh, not Lucy, sorry, Anna starts talking to her. And um, it's inaudible. It's inaudible. You we cannot hear, hear what she's saying. So she's presumably like whispering or something. Yeah. And uh, so there's a meeting that's called, um, I want to say, is it? Yeah, it's before the meeting. The camera pans into Anna's eyes and... Uh, there's like a weird pattern playing out that I know apparently when people have near death experiences, they see like circles and shapes and like the gateway to heaven uh, kind of thing. So I think that's what this is alluding to is, hmm. is that's what it is. And then it pulls out and you see all these cars uh, pulling into the driveway of this house and uh, all these old white people are coming out Um and there's a little bit of excitement and this this older man named Etienne uh you know has a has a brief meeting with everybody saying you know Anna Aloy um at 12:32 whatever p.m. Mm -hmm. uh achieved martyrdom uh she was in a, the translate state for like two and a half hours um this has been confirmed by yada yada the mademoiselle had a conversation with her and she'll be sharing the details momentarily and then he goes up to ask the mademoiselle um if the if she got an answer if the answer was succinct succinct uh precise and like one other thing i can't remember what, what exactly it was but you know he he really wants to know yeah. clear or whatever yeah I, I, yeah and uh the lady says yes it was and um he point blank asks so you know what did she say and the mademoiselle um uh, she she says you know what do you think uh happens when we die and he says well i'm not too sure and and she says well keep doubting and then she pulls a gun out of her purse and kills herself and we get a shot holding on anna that is flayed uh that i i turned off the, the <laughs> movie shortly after that because i already knew what was there and i was like ah i already feel sick i need to <laughs> i need to stop watching the this camera movie. slowly pans in on on anna's eyes yeah and that's it that's uh, yeah. that's the movie and so i guess the last thing i'd like to pose about this film is what do you think anna told the mademoiselle or have you ever given it a thought of course okay let's hear it it's it's both the most you know the most obvious and, and maybe even the least interesting question because like you immediately think well 
on one hand, it couldn't have been something horrifying because why would she have killed herself? It could be though. You know, why would she speed to that end? It could be though. I, that's it's, what I'm not sure about because sure. is she saying like, you know, th- there is a hell and you're going to it essentially. Mm-hmm. Why would she kill herself? Why wouldn't she prolong, you know, her life to avoid that? You know, because it is inevitable, but and it's one of those things. Um, it's meant to be ambiguous. Obviously. Yeah, cool. well, obviously, yeah. And for for whatever reason, she does not wait to tell the assembly of you know rich white people that have gathered here to to hear about it. You know, she keeps it secret to herself. I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. Okay, and I don't think the director does either. You know, he wants it to be ambiguous. Yeah, obviously. Uh, uh, so. I, I, I so what theories did you read on? Uh... Oh, it's not that I, I read too many of them, but like there's a there's an Irish YouTuber that covers horror movies that yeah. wanted to talk about that. You know, the consequences of of knowing the answer. Right. Yeah. So on the one hand, it could be, yes, there's a heaven, you know, and if this movie has Catholic undertones, as long as you've asked, asked for forgiveness, um, you know, you will be absolved of all of your sins and go to heaven, right? I know that suicide is not the it's cardinal sin. Yeah, it's a cardinal sin. So I don't too sure if uh, maybe she asked for forgiveness prior to blowing her brains out. Um, but if heaven exists and you're Catholic and you know that's your easy way in, then I'm sure she's racing to get into heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, and the idea of not telling everybody is because if the word gets out and that there is a heaven, there's going to be so many people killing themselves. That's the whole reason why it's a cardinal sin um, is to keep people from being like, oh, my life sucks. I'm just going to do this because I am promised eternal life mm-hmm. at, you know, at the right hand of God or whatever. Right. Um, the other one is... Yes, there is a heaven, um, but you're not going mm-hmm. because of what you've done, you know. So um, being robbed of that and living with the guilt of what they've done to all of these women, you know, might cause her to to do that. And she's at least keeping that secret from everybody else. Um, and without her, maybe she's the one that's bankrolling. I'm not too sure. But mm-hmm. uh, without leadership, uh, you could assume that the organization is not going to keep going. Um, and then the third one is no, there's nothing after um, after this, and you know you've you've wasted your time. Yeah. Um, which to, to me that answer makes the most sense as to why she would kill herself. Yeah, and not same. tell Everybody but, same. But it's like I said, it's the least interesting question. Oh, it, I don't know about that. No, the whole point is the mystique. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, there sure, was sure, no sure. answer that would be satisfying as the non-answer. I don't know. I think the the having a conversation about the theories is is fun <laughs> and interesting. That's the whole reason why we're doing this. But. <laughs> No, 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 no. But we are ruining the movie by trying to analyze and interpret it. That's well, why no, it's debasing the movie. I would, say, I would say we're not ruining the movie, Jared. We're debasing the movie, you dingus. That, that's just that's the one and the same. I'm sorry to say. I know. Um, but yeah, so that's Martyrs. Uh, this is my favorite movie. Um, and I, I, there's so many reasons why. Um, if you made it all the way here and you're not disgusted and you really think you've got the stomach for it, then by all means, put it on, watch it, message me afterwards. Well, we've kind of, we've debased it. Like, yeah, we have. So quite I mean, like, literally, you know, I've never meant that more by yeah. this point, you know? <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, still, I think this um, this movie is is worth a watch. I mean, like, if... Yeah, if, if you think you can stomach it, it is a good film. Like... Yeah, I would recommend do it. Do I ever want to see it again? No. Would I ever make anyone watch this? No. Was I horrified to learn that Simon Pegg showed his, like... 12 year old daughter this movie recently yes. like two months ago yeah, while he was on the press tour for mission impossible dead reckoning he admitted that he had shown this to his you know pre-teen daughter that not even teenage is going to have so many problems when they get older or they're gonna I, be yeah. like me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I to to parrot what you just said but in the opposite Will I watch this movie again? Yeah, more than likely. Oh, yeah. And that's fine. Um, do I want other people to watch this? Yes, because I want you to talk to me about it. And um, <laughs> I'm a sicko. <laughs> I'm a sicko. I don't even know what that is. What, what's that's that song? You. It's just you being. Oh a sicko. yeah, it's me being a sicko. <laughs> it's dude. Set in a sing-songy um, way. I I'm wasn't always, quoting anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I can't remember what your third thing was, but whatever it was, the opposite of that. And this movie's good. You hate fun. And I hate fun and I love misery. And exactly. That's why Martyrs is Will's number one ride or die. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, it's, it, it hurts uh, that the, the director is probably a shithead. 
Uh, that sucks. That happens. Allegedly. That happens to, yeah, allegedly. Uh, <laughs> that happens to too many of the directors I like. Like, I, I love the the movie uh, The Pianist, but the Polanski is an awful person. Oh, my God. You know? Um, yeah. So it's just like, it sucks. It sucks to hear that, but... Uh, yeah, this is this movie is awesome. It's got so much going for it. Yeah. It's done um, beautifully. I think a lot of the messaging is uh, on point. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I'm of the same mindset, man. I I, I do want to know what happens after uh, we perish. It's a uh, it's if you've listened to this uh, show, you know that I have a very weird relationship with my own demise. And uh, I don't know, man. This this movie like made me think. You know, uh, I just love it. It's so good. Yeah, I, I think I've said this already, but it is a powerful film. Yeah. And it, like, I, I mean that. Yeah. It, it it handles the themes that it's dealing with so surprisingly well. Yeah, masterfully. Yeah. And, you know. And it is a, you know, it's a low-ish budget French it, horror film. That's an hour and 40 minutes. It's an hour and 40 minutes. And, it, and it, it feels like three hours long. Yeah, it is excruciating to watch. Yeah. Like, even... I, you you yourself said that you were a, I felt sick afterwards right you were more squeamish on this watch yeah I was and like and you're the kind of person that hypes up like I love this movie I'm gonna watch it all the time and I, you I were do, you yeah. came away kind of being like man that was rough yeah, <laughs> like, is that what you texted me I think it was I, like, yeah I was like yeah this one that, yeah I feel sick yeah I, I texted yeah. you I was like I feel sick and you were like oh man I can't wait to talk about this I, I was shocked I it, was like wow it's <laughs> I mean like I can watch stuff and still f- and, and enjoy it but still feel like yeah. like gross but I think that's that, that's one thing that I like about movies uh, if a movie can make me feel something whether it be you know uh uh well, laughter what you say that but i find when i feel manipulated i get oh, upset yeah 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 like the um haunting of not hill house but the the other one the the second season where it was all british people and whatnot that uh, that uh show manipulated me into crying and it did not fucking earn it because that that whole se- was the Shirley Jackson adaptation on Netflix by uh... yeah yeah oh, it was okay. the it I was seen the season two. it was the second season okay. uh, but it was like a completely different story and yeah. whatnot but it still had to do with a house right yeah and um, the way that they ended the last twenty minutes got me and Haley like we were sobbing and yeah. I was like this is unearned right they they are pulling a fucking stunt right that is making me feel you know emotional yeah when they did not earn it this whole show sucked it was boring <laughs> it wasn't good i did not like this at all right it doesn't earn my tears but it's the way that it uses like selective editing sure and music yeah. cues that will like trigger emotions that's like i will cry yeah at like the stupidest like more modern disney movies and like I will feel the emotional swell when they want me to, yeah. Because of all the cues, you know, the audio cues, the visual cues, right. what have you. But, well, but I know when you I become, don't get, I'm not invested. I'm like, fuck this movie. I'm telling you right now, when you become a dad, it's gonna be way worse. Whenever I, I that understand. happens, yeah. I was actually gonna say that. I was gonna pine on that too a little bit yeah. because yeah, I'm a dad now. I find as I'm getting older, yeah, that like I'm changing. Like oh, I'm yeah, no yeah, longer yeah. the edge lord I once was, right. which I knew that I knew. But when I try to watch a lot of horror movies now and especially this i find myself more squeamish and like i don't have the appetite for it and like right. i don't want to watch i still do something this extreme you know? i still do and i still enjoy it yeah um but it does make me feel bad but w- once again what, what i'm getting is, is that yeah i the way that you feel at the end of this movie i think is earned because like yes oh i, I agree I yeah agree. Uh, the film has a journey an arc yeah. if you will Maybe the characters don't exactly. No, no. <laughs> poor Anna. Oh God. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah. No, it's it's yeah. It's doing what it's it's setting out what it what it wants to do, and it does it masterfully, like you said. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know if I've got anything else to, to say about this movie, but I do like it when movies make me feel stuff. Yeah. But I will say you're you're absolutely right in the same thing. Yeah. Uh, like when I watch uh, modern day Disney movies after yeah. being a dad, that shit <laughs> will get me and. I used to not be this week. Right. Um, like, did I tell you about uh, my conversation with uh, Jeremy while I'm playing Baldur's Gate? I don't no. know if I told you this. So, oh, and we can leave this in because yeah, I was going to say like, you want this on mic. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a this is a good um, representation of how being a dad has softened me. Yeah. So, uh, in Baldur's Gate, very early on, you come across a druid's grove that has a bunch of tiefling refugees, and tieflings are like human, human, demonic. Uh, peoples right they're like half human half demon um but they're not you know inherently bad Mm -hmm. 
and uh, these refugees uh, refugees are going to be like forced out by the the Druids that are keeping them uh, protected currently because uh, those guys need to make a do a ritual and they cannot have these tieflings here. And there's like six or seven kids, uh, tiefling kids in this camp, and you interact with them a bunch. You find out that there is a goblin horde that is threatening the druid grove. They want that gone because their god, the Absolute, is uh, saying they have to go. All of them have to die. And the person who's leading them is this uh, uh, dark elf uh, woman named Manthara. And in Baldur's Gate, you can get companions, and the only way to get Manthara... Um, as a companion and as a romanceable option is if you go through with her plan, uh, open up the gates to the Druid Grove and kill everybody in there. And I want her on the team because I think it's an it, it, she's an interesting uh, character. You have to do a bunch of stuff in order to uh, to get her like you have to do a bunch of bad stuff in order to, to, to get her. Yeah. And and so um, I was before about the game all in on. Yeah, fuck those tieflings. I'm going to get this character. I didn't realize there was kids there. And so um, the younglings, I, the younglings. Exactly. And I and I texted my buddy Jeremy and I was like, hey, man, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> oh, there's kids in here. And like, I, I really don't think I could do it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, dude, becoming a dad has made you soft. <laughs> you know, uh, you don't you, you're not willing to kill a couple of kids to get the drow mommy. Come on, man. And um I, I made a bit of a fuck up in uh, my conversation with Manthara and mm. I was playing a paladin and uh, I broke my oath on accident. So I was like, ah, let's just lean into the the all evil thing. And I, I killed the the tieflings. Damn. And I felt bad about it because I'm a dad. You killed them all. I killed them all. Not just the uh, men, but the women and, and the children. children too. And there was a wolf in there. So I did kill the animal. Wow. I slaughtered them like animals. Damn. If only there was sand so I could <laughs> complain about it and how getting everywhere and it's coarse, coarse and rough. <laughs> um, so <sighs> yes, two, we were talking about films that you know, like manipulate us. Yes. Yeah, so manipulate undeservedly. Yeah. 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 I had very strong reactions to two very odd films. And I want to hear your, <laughs> your okay, reaction. Yeah, let's, hear to let's hear it. Let's hear it. One of them was the last castle. I have never. It is okay. This is like a completely random movie that I think I just watched on cable one day. Okay, about a. Uh, I I forget some of the specifics, but basically this guy is in charge of an army unit, and they accidentally commit a war crime. Like I don't think they, <laughs> they, they accidentally yeah. a war crime. I don't okay. think they sent out to to commit the war crime, but they accidentally like I don't know if there was like friendly fire involved or something. But anyway. Uh, okay. The you know the guy in charge gets sent to prison. It's like a military prison. Sure. And when he gets there, it's like it's hellish. Like the uh, the warden is an asshole, and you know it's it's run in str- incredibly strict. You know, and so the uh, this army general or colonel or whatever, yeah, uh, that gets sent there um, decides that he's going to like rebel because it's you know it's not right that that he's treating veterans like this even if they're prisoners. I want to look this up because I need to know who it is real fast. Is this a, a recent movie? <laughs> that was 2001, apparently. Oh, okay. Uh, it's The Last Castle starring Robert Redford. Okay, James Gandolfini and Mark Ruffalo. Huh, okay. And Delroy Lindo. Oh, my God. What a cast. I don't even know who that That's, last guy was. Anyway, wow, Mark Ruffalo. I didn't even know who he was at the time or James Gandolfini. But anyway, uh, Robert Redford is the lead. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, he's like the epitome of like American, yeah. uh, hoorah patriotism. Like mm-hmm. you just see him and you're like, wow, what a good looking, handsome boomer, you know? <laughs> but anyway, he, uh, I just remember the climax of the film is like, he leads like a charge against, uh, the warden and, and like the, uh, you know, the guards of the prison, mm-hmm. like all the prisoners have like rised up against them. They're like, they're essentially rioting, but right. like, in like a civil way that like, I guess that like veterans would or whatever. And uh, sure. so Robert Redford, uh, as part of this, like, you know, demonstration, uh, decides that he's going to like put something up on the flagpole and the warden is like, James Gandolfini is incensed by this and, uh, he like, won't let Robert Redford do it. And so as Robert Redford is like walking up to the thing, he thinks he's going to like desecrate the flag or something. But all Robert Redford does is like, 
I think he just puts the flag upside down to show that. And that means distress. Distress, yeah. And, uh, and like, as he's doing it, like, James Gandolfini grabs a gun from a guard and shoots and kills him. And he dies, like, raising the flag. And everyone's just like, you monster. <laughs> and so they, like, get the ward and, like, court-martialed and blah, 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 yeah. blah. And I remember crying at the end of that movie, but being mad. And I was like, fuck this movie. <laughs> He didn't have to do that. That was even after he gets shot, like he continues raising the flag yeah. or whatever. And I was like, this is so dumb. It's jingoism. This is so stupid. No, it's not jingoism. It's no, just like it's that hold on. You don't think that the there was no they like were, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't think that we're like doing a a, a patriotism in order to make uh people, you know, feel something? You mean like that's nationalism? You know what I mean? No, jingoism would be they're like, Oh, there's a Japanese guy in here. We should probably <laughs> put him in an internment <laughs> camp. <laughs> Sorry, I don't I don't do my terms very well. That's, that's, that's fine. Bad. I'm sorry. The Symbology. other film. <laughs> <laughs> the other film, this is a clear opposite. Sure. The Devil's Rejects. Oh, I didn't I didn't like that one. House I, of a Thousand Corpses is the best one. House of a Thousand Corpses is okay. Okay. I was repulsed by Devil's Rejects. Yeah, because it's a bad movie. Uh, well, that too. Uh, but also they are just abhorrent people doing abhorrent things. Yeah. And when the film ends with them going out in a, a blaze of blaze glory. of glory with yeah. the cops while Freebird plays, yeah. I was furious. Yeah. Because I was and I was young. I was like 14 or 15. And I was like, fuck these people. I don't I don't care like them. about yeah. them. I want them to die. I want them to get blown to bits. Yeah. I don't want them to have like this heroic like blaze of glory ending. I want them to get shredded to bits. They are horrible, horrible people. people and somehow they survive that and there's a third movie i don't want to talk about it i've seen it <laughs> what is that one called too the uh because they have cool names the movies yeah the movies do have cool names i can't remember what that it's like three called. from hell or something yeah three from hell that's yeah, what it was yeah. yeah i like rob zombie's music you know I have not no, he does any have movies he, wait hold on you didn't like the um the salem um you know i didn't see it because i was just so it's was, actually good I didn't like anything else he did. I don't even like it, his Halloween movies. And I saw the first one. It's actually good. Maybe I'll get around to it. Yeah. Yeah. What is it called? Because it's not Salem's Lot. Um, Witches no, it's of not Salem. Salem's Lot. It's a, uh, yeah. I, no, I don't even think it's Witches of Salem. It's something else. It's yeah. something Salem. And uh, of course, it's Sherry Moon. Uh, oh, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but like, she's, she's like dressed like a normal person. She's acting like a normal person in this movie. And it's, it's got, it's good. Hmm. It's actually good. Okay. It's not bad. Maybe I'll it's not a shot one day. But. It's not three from hell and it's not devil's rejects. I really did like House of a thousand corpses when they yeah. went underground and stuff. That sh- Dr. Satan, that shit was cool as fuck. Dr. Satan was crazy. Yeah. Dr. Satan was fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, wow. We, that- we, 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 uh, <laughs> Far from well, actually, no, no, no. I I do like that you brought up uh, Devil's Rejects, not to make this episode any longer than it already is, but um, that movie has torture and abuse, but not done with any kind of uh, what do you say, um, reason, rhyme or reason. There is oh, it's just being done to be done to be shocking and exactly, yeah, yeah. It's it's almost the opposite of this film, yeah. And they both came out around the same time. Right, because I, I think Devil's Rejects wasn't 2004. There's no way it was. Uh, it could have been. Let me take a look. I'll I'll look it up real quick. I mean, that's not that far off. No, it's not. But like, it's just a uh, an interesting uh, parallel where they both do similar. Sim- oh, 2005. Yep. So they both do similar things, but um, one is handled with care, almost like as careful as you possibly can be when you're torturing people, and one is <laughs> is purely for the the shock yeah of yeah. it and uh i would not re- recommend devil's rejects but i wholeheartedly with every fiber of me being recommend you watch martyrs at least once and see how you are on the other end but there's those are two totally different weirdos people who like <laughs> this is true devil's rejects and people who like martyrs <laughs> <laughs> that's true which one should you run the furthest away from you know <laughs> you're you, we're good buddies so i mean i think that says a lot <laughs> Honestly, if you're li- if you've listened to as many episodes as we've got out and you've enjoyed it up to this point, I'm pretty sure you want to be around the martyrs guy. I uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, folks, we finally did it. We did it. We did the martyrs. We episode. did the martyrs episode. Thank you for listening. You can find our show on social media by searching for at debaser pod. Uh, oh, also, hey, 
we have a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, we've got a YouTube uh, channel it's now. It's been up for a moment by the time you hear this, but yes. I've spent the past weekend uh, building our YouTube channel. Inspired by uh, one of, a friend of the show, oh. John Lennon from Art of War, because you asked him a bunch of questions. Oh, so no, it was actually, it was Jeremy that uh, kind of pushed me to do it. Oh, was it? Because I was okay. asking him, like, how does he listen to podcasts? Because I was like, what podcast do you right. use? And he's he like, like, I, I use YouTube. YouTube. And I was That's like, right. oh, I'm, I keep like, you know. YouTube is the one thing we weren't on for all this time because you have to make videos. Yeah. And I do not know how to use video editors. And I finally just sat down with uh, Da Vinci and taught myself how to do this. It was very simple. I just gotcha. had to actually sit down and give myself like an hour to figure it out. <laughs> also inspired by that one YouTube, uh, you Uber driver that I had. Oh, the guy that kept telling you. like <laughs> Back in, yeah. back in uh, March yeah. or not March, uh, May. But I got to say, uh, you know, it was not as hard as I thought it was going to be. It took me you know, just a couple of nights to render all the videos. Yeah. And now we have a YouTube channel, so you can go up and listen to them on YouTube if you want. Like, comment, subscribe, and tell me how much of a fucking weirdo I am. Please. And once we hit a thousand subscribers, uh, I think we can then monetize. So we might make a couple of cents off an ad here and there. there So please please subscribe. This one's super advertiser friendly, this this episode right here. Well... (laughs) It's YouTube, man. It's and it's audio, so like whatever. I know, we're just messing yeah. around. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm Jared Rusk, and you can find Debaser on YouTube. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Pro- I don't care about my social. Yeah. Uh, Will, where can people find you? And do you have anything to plug this week? You can find Debaser on YouTube, <laughs> and also a uh, quick shout out to Kyle. Kyle joined the guild oh, no. <laughs> on Tacticus. Throw a Warhammer 40k Tacticus. He joined the Legion. You can too, and you'll get a special stupid ass shout out from me. But please don't do like what he did and James did. Fucking let me know before you join so you can use one of our codes so we can get free I don't, shit from it. I don't think it's too late. I think he can still do it. No, I thought yeah, you can't after you're level eight. Have him try it still. Okay. That's fine. I will. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's Debaser Legion on Warhammer Tacticus. <laughs> if you want to lose two hours of your day every day to a mobile game. <laughs> this is just a gag now. Um, what? You don't have any shows or anything to promote? Uh, like no, any, uh, I can't. Heels got canceled. No, I mean like uh, oh. like Games Workshop shows. Oh, like uh, no. By, by, the time, by the time this is out, I believe the US Open for Tampa is done. But if it's not, okay. uh, come by, see me. I'll be playing um, in it, uh, which would uh, be fun. Hopefully, if, yeah. if you're a 40K player and you listen to this and you're in Tampa, we play against each other. Or you could just come up and tell me that I'm a fucking sicko for liking Martyrs. <laughs> hey, hey, Martyrs was like the grossest movie I've ever seen. And then just run away. Oh, that'd, be... <laughs> that'd be That's a fist fight, uh, sir. <laughs> and then in November, it's a couple of weeks from from when this comes out uh we've got the grand narrative in La- atlanta i'll be dressed up like a warhammer character oh, it's gonna be fucking great awesome uh, the last year's was awesome this one's supposed to be better so yeah. uh go do that i remember we were at a uh, renaissance festival together and ran into a guy dressed up as a warhammer character and you yes he walked by and you just like named him i i don't know who the character was i'm sorry oh he's uh so the guy uh, i because i follow him on instagram i met oh, that's him. right you were actually you knew him too personally yeah. but you just named the character yeah he was and he uh, went, yes <laughs> yeah he had galmaraz the uh the hammer is what okay. i named because he yeah he was just a random inquisitor but he had galmaraz oh. galmaraz is a very famous warhammer okay from warhammer fantasy we actually have a replica of galmaraz at the us opens oh um and it weighs 85 pounds that motherfucker is Holy heavy shit. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a cool it's a cool hammer yeah nice yeah but anyway, yeah, if you see Will at one of those tournaments or something, uh, tell me I'm a sicko. Say hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay, well, good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you for listening. Uh, I, I love you. Good night. <laughs>